communications advisor speakers Ryan and Boehner and Jen Psaki, host of Inside with Jen Psaki, right here on MSNBC, noon Sunday, noon Eastern. Uh, Brendan, first to you. Abortion may help in the primary, but again, how is it going to play for Republicans? Isn't it going to hurt them in the general election with 61 percent of those polled by NBC in our poll just out today disagreeing with the Supreme Court's ruling a year ago? Yeah, there's an enormous gulf between what Republican base voters are going to demand of candidates and, and what a general election electorate is, is willing to accept. And, and that's going to be a difficult issue. And I think a lot of Republican candidates have simply struggled with figuring out where is the safe place that can, that can keep you viable. Um, it's really interesting how Mike Pence is really trying to go on offense on this. Um, you know, Mike Pence, for Mike Pence, abortion is not just a, a political issue. I've spent a lot of time around him, particularly when he was uh, in the House. It's, it's intensely personal for him. This is a, a, a bedrock principle for him. Um, so I don't think he really cares uh, what, whether or not the politics are good. But of course, we can't dismiss that. I think he sees the, his fellow candidates sort of twisting in the wind on this, and he sees an opportunity. I don't know if there is actually a path to winning the nomination uh, purely on uh, the abortion issue, but it at least is some place where he can differentiate himself and sort of go on offense, because frankly, the, the politics of abortion right now, the status quo is not working for Republicans. And um, perhaps he thinks that there needs to be some way to shake it up, maybe go on offense a little bit. I don't know if that's a winning strategy, but we know the, the status quo seems to be a losing one. And Jen Psaki, you spoke to former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi about a lot of things, including abortion mm -hmm. and including, you know, the whole issue of Donald Trump and his claims on this. I want to listen to the sound yeah. first and we'll come out on the other side. Donald Trump is taking credit for the Dobbs decision many times, yeah. uh, even recently posting, quote, I was able to kill Roe v. Wade much to the shock of everyone. Is this something you think Democrats should be hanging around his neck more? Yeah, because first of all, it, it's an hypocrisy of the first order, but that, without going into his, shall we say, inconsistencies, to use a gentler word. Yeah, that's what he's saying. And I think that that has clarity. And there are people in our country, and I respect their view on the issue of a woman's right to abortion. But these same people in the Congress... Eight of them voted for women having the right to contraception. Mm -hmm. Eight. Mm -hmm. I think it was just three, maybe, or so, voted for women to be able to travel to mm -hmm. uh, uh, have access to reproductive health. So make no mistake, there's, there is clarity on their side on this issue. And it is uh, wrong, but it's red meat to their base. That's so fascinating, Jen. Yeah, I mean, we talked about abortion. We talked about the House Republicans and what we saw this week. We talked about Donald Trump and certainly about her husband, Paul Pelosi, and how he's doing. But what was striking about what she was saying there about the abortion issue as it relates to the politics, and we saw this in the NBC poll. I mean, you mentioned the 60 percent, 80 percent of women between 18 and 49 in that poll believe that uh, oppose the Dobbs decision. And what she was saying in her answer there is that Regardless of what Donald Trump has said or hasn't said about an abortion ban, he is somebody who Democrats should run against as opposing women's rights, opposing women's access to health care. And so even as we're watching the Republican primary play out with a range of positions, whether it's the number of weeks saying it should go back to the states, which I asked her about as well, her point is they're not giving women protections. They're not protecting women's fundamental rights that have been in law of the land for 50 years. That is the message. That's that's how we should be talking about it as we look to 2024. And that's clearly the way the Democrats are going to be talking about it. Uh, Brandon uh, and, and Jen and Ali, I want to play something that just happened there at the Faith and Freedom Coalition. Chris Christie got booed. Uh, this is the first time, you know, that he has tested mm -hmm. his campaign strategy of going up against Donald Trump. He's the only one who's doing it that vigorously. And he said that Donald Trump had failed the Republican Party. Let's watch. I'm running because he's let us down. He has let us down because he's unwilling. He's unwilling to take responsibility for any of the mistakes that were made, any, uh, any of the faults that he has, and any of the things that he's done. And that is not leadership, everybody. That is a failure of leadership. And I, you can boo all you want. Brandon, 
Does that strategy work? Uh, well, well, credit to Chris Christie for for going in there and, and doing that and saying that. I, I think what's what won't work is is just letting things go on the direction they're headed. So I, I give him credit for for stepping in there, but it shows what. Um, Chris Christie and all of them are up against. I mean, this is uh, a president who, despite his long sort of twisted history on the issue of abortion, people see him much more as a, a leader of a movement, a leader of, uh, frankly, a culture war than anything else. And people don't back away from, from that very easily. Um, so, you know, th I think that demonstrates that Chris Christie has a long way to go. Um, but nothing is going to change unless people start doing that in the first place. Um, it's going to be an ugly process if you're going to dethrone somebody who's been the head of the party for so long. Um, uh, I imagine that might scare off a few people, but I would argue it's, it's quite necessary.